Get ready to dive into the essence of ancient wisdom, transmitted by the lineage of the great hermetic masters, those whose teachings govern the cosmos with a key and lock. Today, I bring to you a journey through time and esoteric knowledge, exploring a portal to understanding the universe and the magic of Hermes Trismegistus, the emblematic figure who left the world the legacy of his transcendental philosophy. Hold on tight, because this journey will be deep and revealing. Imagine yourself walking through the corridors of an ancient library where sacred secrets echo and the rustling of pages tell stories of hidden knowledge. Here we find the Kabbalion, a work that does not aim to reveal a new philosophy but to provide a master key, one that can unlock the doors to the truth hidden behind millennia of esoteric teachings. The Hermetic precepts, which are the backbone of this text, are knowledge that has persisted with invincible resilience through the centuries since the era of Hermes Trismegistus, the great central son of occultism. This sage, possibly a contemporary of Abraham, planted the seeds of what would become the hidden foundation of various philosophies and religions worldwide. The Hermetic teachings were not intended for the masses, but rather for those few who could truly understand and apply them. Like a lighthouse in the darkness, these precepts served as a beacon, guiding the spiritually advanced to the shores of truth. And don't think that these teachings are remnants of a distant and forgotten era. They were guarded, protected, and transmitted by a handful of initiates, those who kept the flame of pure and inexhaustible wisdom despite the storms of human history. These guardians of knowledge did not seek the approval of the masses, but kept the truth reserved for the prepared, those who were ready to listen and understand. The Kaibalion is a call to these few, it is an awakening for true seekers of wisdom. The Hermetic teachings insist that when a student is ready, then wisdom appears to quench their thirst for knowledge. But for the unprepared, these teachings will be mere empty words. Thus, this book does not seek to offer great details, but rather to lay the fundamental groundwork for those eager to build upon it. The proposition here is challenging. If you are a true student, capable of reflecting, analyzing, and synthesizing, these hermetic principles will not only change how you see the world, but also how you act in it. Otherwise, you will need to develop further, delve deeper into the path of knowledge, as otherwise hermetism will remain an enigma. In summary, in this first excerpt, we were introduced to the power and purpose of the Kabbalion. This work is a promise of enlightenment for those who seek the truth beyond the veil of common reality, on a journey to reconcile apparently fragmented knowledge. And as sentinels of esoteric knowledge, the Hermetic Masters invite us to light our own lamp of wisdom and perceive the universe through their eyes, immortalized by time. We continue our deep dive into the mystical and esoteric universe brought by the Kybalion. In this segment, we are crossing vast millennia to disembark in ancient Egypt, the source of hidden wisdom that influenced, and greatly so, all philosophies throughout the world. I must say this is not just a journey through time, it is an exploration of the very soul of ancient wisdom. So adjust your internal compass and prepare for this journey through the secrets that the masters of the land of Isis, these superior beings of esoteric knowledge, so generously offered to humanity. Ah, my dear listeners, what would we be without Hermes Trismegistus, the undisputed master of masters? The truth is that the details of his life have been lost in the sands of time. I don't exaggerate when I say that Hermes was a titan of spirituality, forging the foundations of occult science, astrology, and alchemy, with influences that transcend the barrier of millennia. The Egyptians, in an act of immeasurable reverence, even deified him, transforming him into the god Thoth. The Greeks followed suit, creating their own icon of wisdom, also inspired by Hermes. Now here's the question echoing through the corridors of time. Why the secrecy? Why were Hermetic philosophy and its precepts so zealously guarded under lock and key? And here is the answer. Because truth, when not understood, can be dangerous and even distorted. This was the ancient precaution, so that this wisdom would not simply be mixed with popular beliefs and theologies, becoming superstition or dogma, as happened with so many philosophies that were lost in the mist of time. But thanks to a few guardians of the hidden flame, True hermetic knowledge persists, 
Although not openly displayed in books, it has been passed down like the torch of the Olympic Games, from master to disciple, from initiate to hierophant. And this transmission was often veiled in the language of alchemy and astrology, only perceptible to those with the right key to decipher. Regarding the Kybalion in particular, this collection of axioms and precepts is the jewel in the crown, representing the essence of hermetic wisdom, whose purpose has always been to illuminate the path of the adept and provoke a true spiritual and mental metamorphosis in the practitioner. The stories of the Philosopher's Stone and its alchemical allegories are here, not as mere transformations of metals, but as shifts in mental and spiritual vibrations. This book, the Kybalion, is a rare and precious opportunity to explore these teachings as they were presented and unfolded by the dedicated students of Hermes, working humbly to decipher and share their unfathomable truths. In the end, what is beautifully stated in these teachings is a universality that defies all limits. Whatever form you use to find wisdom, the law of attraction is precise. When the disciple is ready, the wisdom of the Master will reveal itself. The Kibalian and its teachings do not choose disciples by chance. They find their way to the student through the delicate ballet of the universe, of causality and synchronicity. So, following this principle, perhaps it is fate that has brought this book to you, eager to learn the ways of hermetic truth. And there you have it. Have you ever imagined if the universe were like a giant mind and we were all part of its thoughts? That's the core of the principle of mentalism in the Kybalion, affirming that all is mind, the universe is mental. Everything around us, from the densest matter to the subtlest energy, all the life experiences we have, reside in the mind of the all, this principle of infinite and universal consciousness. Basically, it's like we are cells in the brain of the cosmos, you get it? And this understanding completely changes the way we see the world and ourselves, because everything that happens, happens first in the mind. Moving on to the principle of correspondence, you know that saying, as above, so below? Well, it captures the essence of this concept. It means that there is harmony, correspondence between the various planes of existence. This allows us to understand the unknown by observing the known because the same patterns manifest across all levels of the cosmos. Sounds complicated? Then think about how the structure of an atom can be similar to the solar system. Fascinating, right? Now we leap to the principle of vibration. Nothing, absolutely nothing in the universe, is static. Everything vibrates. Science is there to confirm what the hermetists have known for millennia. These vibrations vary in immense degrees from the densest matter to the purest spirit. And guess what? This principle can be applied to understand states of consciousness, energy, matter. It's all a matter of vibrating at the right frequency. When we talk about opposites... It's time to address the principle of polarity. This idea says that everything has its opposite, but the secret is that these opposites are actually the same phenomenon, expressed in different degrees. Hot and cold, light and shadow, they are all extremes of the same thing. And even crazier, we can transform one state into another. Love can become hate and vice versa, depending on how we understand and apply this principle. We must not forget the famous swing of the principle of rhythm. This teaches us that everything moves like a pendulum, always oscillating between two extremes. The rise and fall of empires, the ebb and flow of tides, even the states of mind within our own minds are all part of a cosmic rhythm. And the beauty of it is that the hermetists have learned to find neutrality, where we can balance this movement, avoiding being carried away by it. It's like when we dance with the universe, sometimes we lead, sometimes we follow, but there's always that rhythm. We are always flowing and ebbing. We just need to discover how to adjust our movements to accompany this cosmic music in the best way possible. And this is just the beginning. There is so much more to unveil as we delve into the depths of this ancient knowledge. Stay with us on this journey through the hermetic principles of the Kabbalion, and let's unlock the doors of knowledge and understanding together. Imagine that you are in a turbulent sea, the waves crash against you, tossing you in every direction. However, there is a secret that can transform you from a drifting buoy to a skilled captain of your own ship. This is how the hermetists see the world, an ocean of forces, oscillating between opposites, 
where they have learned to navigate cunningly, mastering the winds instead of being dominated by them. And this is where the principle of polarity comes into play, which the wise hermetists use to achieve powerful balance. This is the secret. They consciously polarize themselves towards the desired mental state, avoiding being dragged back by the pendulum of extremes. This technique allows the hermetists to remain firm and balanced, while the masses are tossed from side to side by the storms of life. But that's not all. Hermetic art also encompasses the principle of cause and effect. Remember every time something happened and you thought it was just a coincidence? Well, the Kabbalion tells us that there are no coincidences. Every effect has a cause, and every cause has an effect. It's like an endless chain of events within a colossal game of cosmic dominoes. But here's the interesting part. While most people are played by the game, the Hermetic Masters ascend to a higher plane, where they become players, not pawns. They enter the game of life with their own rules and shape reality from an elevated state of consciousness. Imagine a world where your thoughts, emotions, and state of mind could literally reshape the reality around you. Sounds like something out of a fantasy movie, right? But what if I told you that ancient schools of thought, like the Hermetists, firmly believed in this power and said that we can access it too? In this segment, we dive into the concept of mental transmutation, a term that takes us right to the heart of Hermetic alchemy, but it goes way beyond turning metal into gold. This transmutation is the art of changing reality by first changing our own minds. The Hermetists, who followed the teachings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, understood alchemy, astrology, and psychology in profound and transcendent ways. They mastered astronomy, chemistry, and aspects of psychology that we are only just beginning to recognize in modern science, mystical psychology. So, mental transmutation is about turning this understanding into reality. It's about seeing the universe as a creation of the mind, where everything is susceptible to the influence of our will and inner knowledge. The fundamental idea is that if everything is mental, then transforming our own minds is essentially transforming reality. This concept is rooted in the first of the seven hermetic principles, the principle of mentalism, which states that all is mind, the universe is mental. It means that the foundation of existence, from every speck of dust to every star in the sky, is fundamentally mental. And the ability to transform mental conditions to alter states, forms, and conditions of mental existence is far from being a lost art or a mere set of tricks. Instead, it is a science, a science that hermetic masters still practice today, albeit in secret, away from the world's watchful eyes. And the shocking thing is, the truly mind-blowing twist is that these masters can, through mental transmutation and in accordance with the principle of mentalism, master not only the mental but also the physical. They can alter material conditions and even natural phenomena. Now you don't have to be a hermetic master to practice mental transmutation. Many phenomena considered psychic or related to mental science operate under the same principles using techniques that alter mental states for various effects including influencing other minds and changing life conditions. So, we come to understand that there is no such thing as solely material or solely mental. In the end, Hermetism teaches us that everything is a manifestation of the mind, and therefore everything is susceptible to the process of mental transmutation. But for this transmutation to be effective, we must understand and master the Hermetic principles, starting with the principle of mentalism. In this fascinating segment of the Kybalion, we dive into the mystery of what is called the All. We discover that behind the fleeting appearances of the universe, time and space, there lies a substantial, true and eternal reality. And here's the magnificent detail. This reality is so much more than our limited senses or intellect can grasp. As we gaze upon the universe, we notice that everything is transient and subject to constant change. Everything is born grows, reaches its peak, and then starts to decline. It's as if the universe is an eternal dance of creation and destruction, always in motion. But the keen reader will realize that this dance is not chaotic. It is a choreography executed by a hidden and powerful force, the All. This raises a reflection that touches every culture and era of human thought. The existence of something beyond what we see and know 
a substantial reality that many have called divinity, energy, or simply matter. However, the book takes us to a deeper understanding by introducing the notion of the all as the encompassing force behind everything, avoiding any associations with human limitations and warning us against inadequate attempts to define the undefinable. The wisdom expressed in the Kaibalion affirms that no matter how much we strive, the true core of the all is unknowable. But that does not mean we should stop seeking understanding. On the contrary, it is a call to approach the existence of the all with humility and an open mind. The text steers us away from the pitfalls of theology and metaphysics, often projecting anthropocentric concepts onto the all. Instead, we are led to understand that religion and philosophy can be used as tools to bring us closer to reality, always remembering that the all is eternal, unlimited, and unchangeable, implying that nothing finite, including ourselves, can be fully real in the broadest sense. Continuing our journey of discovery through the text, we encounter the enigma of matter and energy. Even current science reminds us that what we call matter is energy at a certain level of vibration. So, is the all just energy? The answer is no, because the all transcends the limits of blind energy and material mechanics. A crucial point the book reveals is that the all is a living mind, an infinite spirit that is beyond our finite understanding of life and mind. This is a sublime notion that elevates the reader's understanding of what the universe is and what its true foundation is. This segment ends with the certainty that the all is unfathomable but its comprehension is the key to understanding not only the universe, but also our place in it as part of this living and infinite force called spirit. By exploring this idea, the Kabbalion sparks a true philosophical awakening, urging us to contemplate the mystery and magnitude of what we could call the divine. Let's dive together into the revolutionary and almost unfathomable idea that the universe this colossal and complex cosmic machinery is actually a mental creation originating from the mind of the all. Just imagine for a moment that everything around you, from the twinkling stars in the vastness of the sky to the tiniest grains of sand and even your most secret thoughts, all exist within the infinite consciousness of the all. In the Kaibalion, we are introduced to the concept of the all is spirit, but trying to define what spirit is is like trying to describe the totality of the all with words. A futile task because spirit transcends our understanding, and so we use the simple term spirit as an attempt to encapsulate the lofty idea of the infinite living mind. Now, let's unravel the mystery of the universe. We consider that nothing is beyond or outside of the all. But right off the bat, we encounter a paradox. If the universe is constantly changing and composed of many, how can it be the unchanging and indivisible all? If the universe is neither the all nor nothing, then what is it, actually? Philosophers have attempted to explain this dichotomy by suggesting that perhaps the all created the universe from itself, which raises complex questions about the omnipresence and indivisibility of the all. Here, some individuals misinterpreted these ideas, proclaiming themselves as gods, but the Kaibalian promptly exposes this as an inflated ego misconception. To understand the true nature of the universe, we turn to the principle of correspondence, which suggests that, as above, so below. That is, we can look at the mysteries of the macrocosm by observing the microcosm, and vice versa. By doing so, we see that man creates in three ways, through external materials, through reproduction, or, most relevant here, by creation in his own mind. It is in this last form that we find a reflection of how the all manifests the universe. Thus, the Kaibalion proposes that the universe and everything within it is a mental creation, an image generated by the infinite mind of the all. Just as you can create an entire world in your imagination, the all does the same on an inconceivably grand scale. In this universe of minds, the all appears as both masculine and feminine, essentially the generative principles rather than sexual dimorphism. Despite the apparent duality, the all remains undivided, transcending the laws of the universe it created, including those of gender. The concept that the fatherhood of God and the motherhood of nature are within all of us is already partially accepted by many, even without fully understanding what it truly means. Far from being a literal paternal and maternal figure, these concepts represent aspects of the manifestation process. 
But our exploration doesn't stop there. Death, that inescapable visitor in our mortal plane, is simply shown as a gateway to new life, another step in the eternal cycle of growth and learning, where man progresses from one state of existence to another until at the end of time cycles reunited with the all. And the most incredible thing is to know that this universe is not the totality of existence. Countless worlds, entities, and dimensions exist beyond our capacity to comprehend, all vibrating within the infinite mind of the all. And you, as a point of consciousness within this vastness, are destined to explore and evolve through ages until death reveals itself not as the end but as a new doorway into the infinite. We've just scratched the surface of the second segment of the Kaibalian, and already the knowledge and concepts we've encountered are mind-expanding. So join me in the next segment as we continue this exploration into the depths of this profound and enlightening book. Stay tuned for more wisdom and insights to come. Have you ever wondered about the nature of existence? The book Kaibalian explores the vast concepts of reality and the universe. Today, we dive into Chapter 6, The Divine Paradox, which delves into the understanding of existence. We encounter two types of wise individuals. The false ones who believe they can defy universal laws and face the harsh reality of natural forces, and the true ones who comprehend the game and use higher laws to shape lower ones, triumphing in the game of life. The chapter reveals that the paradox of the universe originates from the principle of polarity in creation by the ALL. Here's the fascinating part. To the infinite AL, our reality is like a deep dream. But to us finite beings, this reality is incredibly real. We must understand that each plane of existence has its own rules and truths. Imagine if the AL believed that the universe is solid and permanent. We would be condemned to stagnation, never experiencing anything new. Let's not fall into the same trap of living as if reality were simply a dream where we can disregard consequences. We must be cautious as we contemplate the cosmos, balancing the stars of reflection and the mud of practical reality. The chapter continues, stating that the universe is a constant paradox, a reality that both exists and does not exist simultaneously, depending on the perspective, absolute or relative. We must not get lost in half-truths and fail to see both sides of this cosmic coin. Within this narrative, we are advised not to disregard the relative aspect, the limited human perspective that sees, feels, and experiences the universe in a tangible way. Although everything here might be less than a breath when compared to the AAL, it is in this breath that we play the game of life. Now, let's enter the infinite minefield of the ALL where everything truly happens. We are securely held within this mind, and it is here that we must find peace and tranquility. The mentality of the universe is no less real, but rather a different level of reality, a reflection of the ALL's mental projections. Confronting the mental reality of the universe, we invite everyone to master its laws and apply higher knowledge in our daily lives. We master the physical with the spiritual, the lower with the higher, but we must remember that we can never completely escape the law, because everything that exists is ultimately an expression of the ALL. Lastly, the chapter delivers a powerful warning. Even the higher entities with immense power are subject to the laws of the ALL. We must not fall into the illusion that we can rise above these laws. Respecting natural laws is essential because the entire universe is firmly bound to them. Only the AL is the AL, and all of us, Entities and beings of creation serve in the creation and order of the universe. Can you imagine a universe where every sight, feeling, and experience is a manifestation of the mind, a reality made of pure thought? Every star in the sky, every grain of sand on the beach is a product of the cosmic intellect. Let's dive deeper into this fascinating concept with the hermetic principle of mentalism, an idea that not only challenges our perception of reality, but also bridges the gap between ancient wisdom and modern science. The universal mind, known as the All-El, is the origin of all things according to Hermetic teachings. The notion that everything is mental might seem distant to the materialism long held by science. But here's the incredible part. Science seems to be circling back to embrace these ancient truths as it seeks a deeper understanding of the true nature of the universe. Herbert Spencer an influential English philosopher, 
propose that the universe is constituted by an infinite and eternal energy, and hermeticists see this as an echo of their own beliefs. The energy Spencer describes is in the hermetic view, the energy of the mind of the all. Hermeticists respect science so much that they believe it will eventually catch up and embrace these ancient truths that have resonated with the thoughts of early philosophers like Heraclitus. They do not reject concepts like evolution or rhythm proposed by science. Instead, they see them as harmonious with the hermetic laws. However, there is a crucial distinction. Where science often ignores mental power, hermeticism places it at the forefront, empowering those who recognize its potential. The principle of mentalism suggests that even though the external universe may seem ephemeral and impermanent, we must live as if it is concrete and real because that's how life takes shape and meaning. What changes in perception is the acknowledgement of mental power as a dominant force in nature, a resource that practitioners can learn to utilize for their benefit. Kaibalian, our map in this realm of knowledge, warns us of the dangers of being hypnotized by the apparent unreality of things. Those who get lost in fantasy and deny reality are like the false wise and will face a tragic end. In contrast, the true sage uses hermetic knowledge to transform the negative into the positive and ascend above the lower planes of existence. Therefore, understanding and utilizing mentalism means not only knowing the universe on a deeper level, but also applying this knowledge to live a more intentional and powerful life. We do not live in a world of dreams. On the contrary, we live in a universe where, no matter how relative it may be, our existence and actions have real and concrete meaning. Our task is to use the laws that govern this universe to transcend from a lower state to a higher one, fulfilling our mission on the path of evolution. This is the true mastery that Kaibalian preaches, not neglecting reality but utilizing it to create our personal alchemy. Following the steps of the wise means avoiding the error of false illusions and living with a full awareness of reality using higher laws to transform the experience of life into something greater. And remember, students of Hermeticism, the greatest wisdom lies not only in contemplation, but also in the practical application of our minds to shape the reality that surrounds us. Now, imagine a universe where every particle, every speck of existence carries within it the splendor and mystery of a supreme force. This is the stage where the concept of the all in all shines a truth so immense that it encompasses both the infinitely large and the infinitesimally small. This ancient maxim that Kaibalion describes, echoed in various religious contexts, asserts that God or divinity dwells in everything, while simultaneously everything resides in Him. Delving deeper into this enigma, we encounter the idea that the universe, in all its vastness, is nothing more than a thought in the mind of the All-All. Yes, Everything we know and experience is an aspect of a higher consciousness, the great mental ocean. And though we might be swimming in this vast sea, we are not separate from it. In fact, the very power that sustains our existence is a tiny reflection of this all-encompassing force. To illustrate this notion, think of an artist and the characters they create. Just as Shakespeare lives through characters like Hamlet or Macbeth, the All-L is present in every element of the universe but be careful not to confuse the characters with the author. Here lies the complexity of the paradox. The character may say, the spirit of my creator is within me, but never claims, I am my creator. There is a vital distinction, the intrinsic relationship between the creator and the creation. And so the worm in the soil, as humble and insignificant as it may seem, carries the divine within it. However, it is not the divine in its entirety. This is what makes it fascinating, Within every being, even the tiniest creature, the AL is imminent, alive, and active, even though the creature is not the LL. Evolution, then, is a frenetic ascent on the grand staircase of life, with steps ranging from raw matter to the spirit of the ALL. This is true spiritual growth, recognizing the imminent spirit within each one of us and its progressive manifestation. Nothing is outside of this process. Everything is part of this ascension. All forms of life are a journey back to the source, a spiral towards unity with the All-El. According to Kaibalion, the creation of the universe is an act of deep meditation by the All-El. Like an artist lost in creating their masterpiece, 
the ale immerses itself in the effusion of its own spirit into matter. And when creation reaches its densest point, the reverse process begins. The infusion, a return to the spirit, a journey back home. Each soul rises through eons. Each step taken is a step forward on the evolutionary scale. And each gentle cycle in which the ALL contemplates its creation is a step towards that ultimate reunion. But then the question arises, one that has plagued philosophers and thinkers for millennia. Why does the ALL create universes? This question goes beyond the answers we can provide. It lingers in the realm of metaphysical speculation. Kybalion, wise at its core, advises us to recognize that for certain mysteries, we must simply contemplate the grandeur of the plan and accept the humility of our limited view. As we reflect on the difference between the creations of finite minds and the infinite mind, we are called to recognize our own participation in this grand cosmic drama. We are not passive spectators, but active players, embodying the splendor of the ALL as we strive to ascend on the tireless journey of evolution and spiritual awakening. Now, we are about to embark on a colossal question that has tormented philosophers and thinkers for millennia. Why does the ALL, the source of everything, create? Get ready for a metaphysical journey as we attempt to unravel this intriguing enigma that has puzzled us for so long. Have you ever wondered why the universe exists? Is there a purpose behind its creation? In the book Kybalion, we delve into these deep questions and explore the concept of the ALL, an absolute and limitless entity that encompasses everything. But why would the All want to create the universe when it already possesses everything? These ideas may seem perplexing at first, but as we dig deeper, we discover that the All may have a creative nature within its infinite existence. As we journey further into the mysteries of the ALL, we encounter the concept of reason and cause and effect. However, the AL transcends these concepts, and we are left grappling with its inexplicability. It simply is and acts because it acts. This realization may leave you feeling a bit dizzy, but it also highlights the inherent nature of the all. The all is its own justification, its own norm, and its own activity. It encompasses all reason, laws, and actions within itself. These aspects of the all all form what we call the state contrasting with the aspect of existence, where everything converges within the essence of the all. These profound mysteries go beyond human comprehension, and even Hermes Trismegistus, the great icon of Hermeticism, chose silence when pressed for answers. If even Hermes remains silent, what can we, mere mortals, say? Perhaps the greatest wisdom lies in recognizing that some keys are hidden, and knowledge comes to those ready to understand. One thing is clear. The all permeates everything, and everything exists within the all. By grasping this profound concept, we touch the heart of universal knowledge. Now let's shift gears and explore the fascinating topic of the law of correspondence in the book Kybalion. Imagine a universe where everything is interconnected, where atoms pulsate with energy, and where vibrations weave through every aspect of existence. This is the world of the law of correspondence, which states that, as above, so below, as within, so without. In this vast universe, we have three planes of existence, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. These planes are interconnected and in constant movement and transformation. We come to understand that the differences between the microscopic and the macroscopic are merely vibrations in an energetic dimension. Within the physical plane, there are seven smaller planes, each containing different energies and substances that make up our physical reality. From solid, liquid, and gas forms to the ethereal substance that permeates everything, this classification reflects the interconnectedness and interdependency of matter and energy. Moving into the mental planes, we discover the complexity of the mind. Just as there are seven subdivisions within the physical plane, there are also seven subdivisions within the mental plane. From the minds of minerals to the human mind, consciousness and vitality exist on different levels throughout this vast realm. Beyond the mental planes, we encounter the elemental planes, home to ethereal entities that play vital roles in the cosmic theater. These elemental minds bridge the gaps between the mineral, plant, and animal kingdoms, adding harmony and balance to the universe. Finally, we reach the spiritual plane, where existence reaches indescribable heights. 
Within this transcendent realm, we find beings like angels, archangels, and demigods. These entities, along with our own masters and adepts, participate in the affairs of the universe and form the basis of many religious and mythological narratives. However, it is essential to remember that even these divine beings are creations of the ALL and operate within the cosmic and universal laws. They are subject to the same rules that govern us mere mortals, but their understanding of spiritual phenomena far surpasses our own. In conclusion, the book Kaibalion dives deep into the interconnectedness and interdependence of the universe. The all L, as the source of all creation, expresses its complexity through various planes of existence. From physical matter to mental consciousness and spiritual transcendence, everything operates according to the same hermetic principles. This profound understanding reminds us that the universe is far greater than it appears, and the axiom, as above so below, resonates throughout every corner of existence. Hey there, book lovers. Welcome back to another exciting episode on my channel. Today we're diving into the mesmerizing world of the Kaibalion. And trust me, this book is about to blow your mind. In this segment, we'll be exploring the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth great hermetic principles. The law of vibration, the law of polarity, the law of rhythm, and the law of cause and effect. So let's get started with the law of vibration. Imagine a universe where everything dances in perfect harmony from the tiniest atom to the gigantic stars in the night sky. Nothing is still. Everything vibrates. The ancient Greek philosophers spoke of this concept, and now modern science has rediscovered this ancient truth. Matter is just condensed, vibrating energy. Even our thoughts and emotions vibrate. By understanding and harnessing these vibrations, we can control our state of mind and emotions. It's all about finding the right frequency, my friends. Moving on to the law of polarity, it reveals that everything in the universe has its opposite, hot and cold, light and dark. These opposites are really just different degrees of the same thing. By shifting our perspective and understanding that these opposites are connected, we can transform ourselves and our reality. We have the power to change fear into courage, hate into love. It's all about adjusting the intensity of these emotions until their nature shifts. Now let's talk about the law of rhythm. Just like a pendulum swinging back and forth, the universe operates in a perpetual rhythm. Everything is in constant motion, from the tides to the changing of seasons. We also experience rhythm in our own lives, with ups and downs, joy followed by sadness. The key here is to rise above these fluctuations, to find a state of balance and neutrality. By mastering the law of rhythm, we gain control over our reactions and minimize their impact on us. Finally, we come to the law of cause and effect. This law teaches us that nothing happens by chance. Every choice we make, every event that occurs in our lives, sets off a chain reaction of consequences. It's like a game of billiards where each collision changes the course of our lives. This principle reminds us that we are not victims of fate, but creators of our own reality. By understanding the power of cause and effect, we can make conscious choices and shape our destiny. So, my fellow seekers of knowledge, as we unravel the secrets of these hermetic principles, we gain insight into the very fabric of the universe. Each principle offers us a key to unlock doors to higher realms of power and understanding. By attuning ourselves to these universal laws, who knows what wonders we can achieve. Stay tuned for the next segment, where we'll explore the remaining principles of the Kabbalion and continue our journey into the mysteries of life. And that's a wrap for this segment, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more exciting book summaries. Until next time, keep exploring the secrets of the universe, and remember, you have the power to shape your reality. Welcome, my fellow knowledge seekers, to another mind-blowing edition of my book summary series. Today, we dive into the sixth segment of the legendary book, Kybalion. Can you feel that cosmic energy pulsating in the air? It's the universal symphony of causality, guiding everything from the stars in the sky to the falling of a single leaf. Now, let's debunk the myth of chance, my friends. The idea of randomness is just a bedtime story told around a campfire. Dive deep into this legend, and you'll discover that what we call chance is simply our ignorance of the hidden web that weaves reality. Just take a look at a simple dice game. It might seem random, 
but when you consider the physics involved, the player's muscles, the texture of the table, you'll find a complex mechanism of cause and effect at play. Even the seemingly innocent flip of a coin reveals an order, a pattern governed by the infallible law of cause and effect. Don't be fooled. Every tiny event, be it death plunging from a mountaintop or a speck of soot crossing your path, is the result of a profound chain of events that stretches back to the dawn of time. Think about the vast network of relationships that have shaped us. Countless ancestors, with their choices and actions, have led us precisely to this moment where you are now, absorbing these very words. This ancient knowledge urges us to question, who is the master of our destiny? Do we dance to the whims of chance, or can we become masters of our own lives? The esoteric truth of Kybalion whispers to us that we are both pawns and kings in the cosmic chessboard. While we are influenced by external and internal forces, we also possess the power to shape, refine, and even transcend these very forces. The great masters of the past have taught us that, although we cannot escape the vast web of causality entirely, we can learn to navigate it more skillfully. While most of humanity is swept away by the tides of life, true masters learn to swim against the currents, to influence and shape events, to become the architects of their own destinies. And here's the key, my listeners. In the grand scheme of things, nothing is insignificant, for everything is connected by the supreme law. Even the most trivial of our actions reverberate throughout eternity, becoming an integral part of the universal order. As the writer of these lines and you as the listener, we are more than mere spectators. We are active participants, agents of transformation in this mysterious and grand cosmic dance of life. Reflections on free will and determinism cross our minds, but hermetic wisdom transcends these dualities, pointing to a dynamic interaction between necessity and freedom, being swept by life and being master of our own journey. The closer we get to the core of our true selves, the freer we become from the shackles that bind us to this mortal plane of existence. And so, as we embody and work with the laws of the earthly realm, we soar towards the higher laws, imbuing our journey with a dimension of full consciousness. We become accomplices of the law rather than its victims. This is the sacred dance revealed by the sixth great hermetic principle. In the vast universe's theater, there are no accidents or coincidences, only an eternal dance of causes and effects, interwoven in the vastness of all that is. Now, my dear friends, let us embark on chapter 13, titled Gender. In this chapter, we plunge into the final great hermetic law, the principle of gender. This principle reveals that the entire universe is permeated by the presence of two aspects, the masculine and the feminine, present in absolutely everything. And I'm not talking about biological sex here. These principles go beyond that, they embody fundamental energetic aspects of creation in all forms and manifestations of life. Now, when we talk about gender in this hermetic context, we go beyond the mere division between male and female that we see in the physical world. The root of the word gender takes us to the ideas of generation, procreation, production. It's a creative and universal principle that transcends simplistic ideas of sex. Modern science with its discoveries about atoms, electrons, and particles, has barely scratched the surface of this ancient concept. We've come to realize that atoms, once thought to be indivisible, are formed through the union of smaller particles, with negatively charged particles swirling around a positive nucleus. These terms, positive and negative, don't reflect strength or weakness, good or evil. They represent a type of energy that embodies the principles of gender at the most fundamental level of matter. Inside the atom, there's a dance between the masculine and the feminine. Science may have different names for it, but ultimately we're talking about creation, procreation, and transformation. Male and female particles come together to form something entirely new in an explosion of creative energy that surpasses their individual identities. But this energetic dialogue between masculine and feminine doesn't just exist in the microcosm. In the macrocosm, phenomena such as electricity, gravity, and the interactions between molecules and atoms can also be interpreted through the lens of the principle of gender. Attraction and repulsion, fundamental elements in chemistry and physics, can be seen as manifestations of a higher principle, 
a drive for union and creation driven by these two great pillars of the cosmos. Hermeticism invites us to apply this lens to the wonders of the mind as well. In our ideas, thoughts, and creativities, the principle of gender is at work. The book Kaibalian leaves us with the tantalizing thought that deeper exploration of this principle in the mental realm could lead to fascinating revelations. This chapter, my friends, is a bridge between the ancient and the modern, suggesting that despite all our scientific advancements, we're only scratching the surface of the profound dynamics that weave reality. It's not just about electrons and particles, but about the very fabric of life and the force that moves not just matter, but the very essence of creation and manifestation. As we venture into the mysteries of the mind and its unexplored phenomena, Chapter 14 of Kaibalian invites us to dive deep into the principle of gender as it relates to the mental domain. Amidst the tangle of new psychological theories and heated debates about the objective and subjective mind, the conscious and subconscious, the active and passive, hermetic philosophy unveils ancient wisdom. According to these teachings, we discover that there are two complementary poles within the mind itself, the masculine and the feminine principles. While modern scholars may find these ideas repetitive, the hermetic knowledge knows it to be an echo of esoteric truths regarding the duality of the mind. Let's delve into this principle of the mind's two facets and uncover that the masculine principle relates to what many call the objective mind, the active, voluntary part of ourselves. In contrast, the feminine principle resembles the subjective, subconscious mind, representing everything passive and involuntary. However, dear friends, keep in mind that the Hermetists do not fully agree with all modern interpretations of these two minds. They present a more refined model, where not all modern attributions of the two minds are fully accepted or considered accurate in the light of direct experience. The key extended to followers of this philosophy is an invitation to explore their own consciousness, recognizing the I Am as a consciousness that extends beyond the material realm. It calls for a separation between the ego and the self, understanding that there's a distinction between who we are and what we experience. In the hermetic narrative, the self, not the ego, is seen as a collection of experiences, emotions, sensations, thoughts, and not the essence of our identity. The true identity is something more stable, unchangeable, remaining even when mental states shift. It is the ego, the essence of the self, that many confuse with the mind or personality. As we advance in understanding that the ego is the source of will, power, and direct action, and the self is the mental matrix of generation, we begin to grasp how the two genders of the mind operate. The feminine mind generates, and the masculine mind acts. Phenomena like telepathy, suggestion, and hypnotism find their roots in the interaction between these two minds. If analyzed through the concept of mental vibrations and gender presented by the hermetists, these new theories could gain a deeper and broader understanding. We're talking about a system where both mental genders have their roles, with the masculine sending forth influences and the feminine receiving them. This dance between the two genders is the source of all creation and manifestation in the mental universe. It's not a matter of being one or the other. It's about understanding how they work together in harmony, weaving the fabric of mental reality. With these pieces in place, we hold a master key that opens doors to understanding phenomena that have challenged the human mind, bridging the material and the immaterial, the evident and the hidden. Imagine a scene in slow motion where you can practically feel the electricity in the air as a storm approaches. That same electricity, that pulsating energy, is present in our minds too. Today, we'll delve into the world of telepathy. Picture two minds, one active and one receptive. The active mind is like a lightning bolt in a storm, vibrant, brilliant, transmitting ideas. This is the energy of the masculine mental principle, which travels through space until it finds the receptive mind, the feminine principle, ready to nurture and nourish that idea until it blossoms. Can you imagine it happening? Well, my friends, it's more real than you might think. Now let's ponder on the power of suggestion and hypnotism. The one making suggestions is like a conductor their masculine principle imposing a vibrational energy, their will, onto the feminine principle of another person. 
The other person accepts this influence and begins to shape their thoughts and actions according to the newly planted idea. What's truly incredible is that over time, these imposed ideas can become so integrated that the person believes they are their own creations, like a cuckoo egg hatching in another bird's nest. Phew, can you handle all this mind-bending knowledge? I hope you're ready for more, because there's still one more segment left. So stay tuned for the final chapter of Kaibalian, where we'll unveil even more mind-blowing insights. And remember, my fellow truth-seekers, the universe is full of hidden secrets, waiting for seekers like us to uncover them. Together, let's journey deeper into the realms of knowledge and expand our understanding of the grand tapestry of existence. Until next time. Hey there, book enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel, where I bring you the juiciest book summaries that will blow your mind. Today, we're diving deep into the final segment of Kaibalian, the ancient book filled with secrets and wisdom that has fascinated people for centuries. Get ready for a mind-blowing journey as we uncover the profound teachings of Hermes Trismegisto and his powerful precepts of Hermetics. In this last segment, we encounter a striking contrast between the strong and the passive members of society. Unfortunately, most people live on autopilot, accepting and acting upon ideas that others implant in their minds. Original and spontaneous actions are rare, as the masses are polarized in their feminine mental principle, leaving the masculine principle of willpower ignored and almost inert. But the true rulers of the world, ah, they know how to activate and exercise the masculine principle of will. They don't rely on borrowed thoughts. They impose their own ideas, create their own mental images, and even influence the minds of others, orchestrating a symphony of thoughts on a grand scale. Can you imagine that? Powerful individuals projecting their seed-like ideas into the collective mind, just like a farmer sowing his field? That's the power of an active mind. We don't have to look far to see the gender principle in action within our minds. Those who possess magnetic qualities, those who can captivate and influence others, use the masculine principle to imprint their ideas upon the world. From actors who can make us laugh or cry, to speakers who can captivate crowds with their powerful words, they all manipulate vibrational energy to construct realities within the minds of their audience. Now all these phenomena are anchored in something called suggestion, which is the process by which an idea is implanted into another mind and begins to take a life of its own. But understanding suggestion without comprehending the mental gender and vibration after all, suggestion precisely utilizes these principles to work. Sure, there are books out there that explain suggestion as a transaction between the objective mind, which is the conscious and voluntary part of our mind, and the subjective mind, which is our deepest and most instinctual portion. However, without the backdrop of the gender principle and vibration, these explanations float in the air without something concrete to hold on to. On the other hand, once we understand the mental gender, the complex puzzles of psychology start to come together intelligently. The challenge here is to understand that at the heart of every creative process, be it on a spiritual, mental, or physical plane, the gender is always present, orchestrating an energetic dance between the masculine and feminine principles. What happens above reflects below, and vice versa. Wrapping up this segment, I invite you to reflect. Can the knowledge of the mental gender principle become our compass, our master key to unlocking the psychic and psychological mysteries? Armed with these tools, we're not here to create a new philosophy, but to illuminate ancient truths with a new light that transcends time and space, connecting ancient Egypt to today. And with this powerful light, we can open our own doors to the temples of knowledge we choose to explore. Within the pages of this chapter of Kaibalian, we are faced with a truth that resonates deeply with any seeker of wisdom. Knowledge by itself is not enough. It's not meant to be kept locked away inside us like a hidden treasure. No, my friends, knowledge is like flowing water. It must freely flow to maintain its freshness and vitality. It cries out to be used, to be put into action. Just like catching rays of sun in your hands, only to feel them slip through your fingers, hoarding knowledge without using it, is a futile and foolish activity. But let's dive even deeper into this ocean of wisdom. To change your disposition or mental state, 
change your vibration. This line from Kaibalian is an invitation to self-transformation. The human mind is surprisingly malleable, changeable through willpower and focused attention. When caught in a whirlwind of negativity, our key to freedom lies in polarity, the power to reverse mental poles. It's the ability to choose courage over fear, light over darkness, with the same natural intention with which we choose to breathe. Let me paint a clearer picture for you. Imagine yourself in a dark room, holding a match in your hand. The decision to ignite it is yours, as is the choice to let the light in. Instead of focusing on driving away the darkness, open the window, allow the sun to penetrate. This is the secret to breaking free from unwanted mental states. And what about life's relentless rhythm that can take us from ecstatic highs to terrifying lows? The hermeticists seem to suggest a kind of dance. Picture yourself above the swing of the pendulum, letting the rhythm sway not affect your choreography. Through the art of polarization and elevating our consciousness, we position ourselves above the hypnotic sway of life's ups and downs. So how do we handle the law of cause and effect, the relentless karma that seems to govern everything? It seems the answer lies in the various planes of existence. By utilizing the laws of a higher plane, we can influence and master the less desirable consequences in the physical plane. This doesn't mean we're above these laws, but through understanding and applying hermetic knowledge, we become conductors, not slaves, of these universal principles. This is what sets us apart from the ordinary, turning us from pawns into players in the game of life. The chapter concludes by reminding us that true transmutation, the supreme art of turning the lead in our lives into pure gold, is a matter of the mind. For if the entire universe is a mental manifestation of the all, then the key to miracles lies not in external rituals, but in the ability to transform and influence with the power of the mind. All magic, all miracles, are within the reach of those who understand and practice these laws. The ALL, the primordial source, is mind. With this monumental understanding, it's as if we're unlocking the most sacred secrets of existence, that the universe itself is mental, and our ability to operate within it is the highest art we can master. Chaos becomes order, darkness becomes light, fear turns into courage, all through the alchemical power of the mind that governs the whole. Today, my friends, we're diving deep into a knowledge that has crossed ages, carefully guarded like precious jewels, and still evokes fascination and curiosity to this day. The Hermetic Precepts of Kabbalion, attributed to the legendary Hermes Trismegisto, the thrice great one. This mystical figure, considered the messenger of the gods, roamed ancient Egypt, imprinting deep and eternal spiritual knowledge. In a time when gods were openly worshipped and magic wasn't just trickery, Hermes Trismegisto established a legacy that would nurture future civilizations with sacred and mysterious knowledge. The Greeks, fascinated by the grand contributions of this master of wisdom, recorded that he left behind a celestial library of 42 sacred books, among which the enigmatic Book of the Dead, or as we should call it, the Book of Coming Forth by Day, stands out, a work that guides souls through the post-life challenges towards eternity. But he didn't stop there. He was a demigod of knowledge, founding wisdom schools attached to majestic temples where various teachings were imparted to eager apprentices thirsty for wisdom. From medicine to music, architecture to political sciences, Hermes was light years ahead, molding a culture with a solid foundation in multidisciplinary knowledge. And now you might wonder, where is this ancient knowledge alive? How did it survive the great river of time? Well, the answer lies in hermetic science itself, a practice that pulsates within the hearts and minds of students of occultism and philosophy throughout the ages. And Kaibalian, this book that we have the honor to explore in detail, is a faithful compilation of these fundamental precepts. It serves as a map, a guide, proving its consistency and value across centuries of experimentation and study. Its persistence attests not only to its relevance, but also to its potency to adapt, survive, and flourish even in the most modern and skeptical environments. So, here we are, ready to continue this journey of discovery and understanding gifted to us by Hermes Trismegisto. With each concept explored in Kaibalion, we connect ourselves to an ancient lineage of thinkers, healers, artists, and philosophers, 
all thirsty for the eternal fountain of wisdom that flows from the deepest roots of our civilization. Remember, we stand before a legacy that knows no temporal boundaries, a knowledge that elevates us above the ordinary, ascending our perception to a plane where everything is connected, where life and death, science and magic, mind and the universe dance together in perfect harmony. It is within this cosmic ballroom that we find the deepest secrets of existence, and it is to this grand celebration that Kaibalian invites us. So, let's move forward, page by page, unraveling the mysteries entrusted to us by Hermes. Within each line lies a universe of knowledge waiting to be explored, and a truth ready to awaken within us. That's it for this segment, my friends. If you enjoyed this thrilling summary, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all your fellow book lovers. And as always, stay curious and keep exploring the vast, mesmerizing world of literature. Until next time.